ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد then to continue with al aqid at tahawiya the creed compiled by Imam Abu Ja'far at tahawi rahimahullah with the explanation of Sheikh Salih ibn Fawzan al Fawzan hafizahullah then last week we had some points concerning the angels points 168 to 170 and we have iman in the angels who are noble scribes since allah has appointed them as guardians over us and we have iman in the angel of death who is entrusted with taking the souls of the people and in the punishment of the grave for those who are deserving of it and in munkar and nakir questioning each person in his grave about his lord his religion and his prophet as occurs in the narrations from allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and from the companions may allah be pleased with them Amen. so we had some points concerning the angels and that allah has appointed angels over each person was supplied and given angels as guardians over each person four angels an angel in front and behind as guardians until his appointed time of death comes and an angel on his right writing his good deeds and an angel on his left writing down his evil deeds likewise there was a mention of the angel of death and his assistants from the angels who along with him take the souls of those who die and then there was a mention of the punishment of the grave and the two angels who question the person in the grave munkar al munkar and an nakir then with regard to this week then this point concerning the grave at least con- continues so at tahawi rahimahullah he said wal qabr rawdatun min riyad al jannah aw hufratun من حفر من حفر النيران he said and the grave will be either a garden from the gardens of paradise or else a pit from the pits of the hellfire شيخ الفوزان said حفظه الله he said a person may say a dead person turns to dust then how can then how can he be punished whilst he is dust we a question a person when he's in his grave eventually he, he rots away turns to dust how can, how can it be said that he that the dust is punished sheikh Fawzan, sheikh Fawzan responded and said then we say allah is fully able to cause the dust to be fiercely heated upon him or rather uh, sheikh fazan said rather he said we say allah allah is fully able to punish him whilst he is dust and he is fully able to cause the dust to be fiercely heated upon him so just repeat the response of the sheikh he said we say allah is fully able to punish him even whilst he is dust and he is fully able to cause the dust to be fiercely heated upon him then sheikh fawzan brings a second question that some people may raise he said and someone may say 
but not all of the people are buried. Some of them are thrown into the sea, and some of them are eaten by wild animals. So how can punishment come to him? I mean, a person like that. How can punishment to the grave come to a person like that? Someone who's been thrown into the sea, or someone eaten by wild animals. He said, we say, yes, the punishment will indeed come to him. In whatever place he is in. And likewise the two angels will come to him. In other words, it doesn't matter how the person dies, where he dies, in the sea, torn to pieces by wild animals, still the, the affair of puni the punishment of the grave, if, if it applies to him, it will come upon him. And likewise the two angels who question the grave, they will come to him, no matter how he dies. Sheikh al-Fawzan said, And having Iman in this is a part of the Iman in the Ghaib. Having Iman in this is a part of having Iman in the hidden and the unseen. And it is a part of having Iman in whatever Allah has mentioned and whatever his messenger has mentioned. The Iman in the punishment of the grave, it falls under both of these things. Iman in the ghaib, Iman bil ghaib, Iman in the hidden and unseen, and Iman in whatever Allah has informed of, or whatever his messenger has, has informed of. And as for the person who does not have Iman in this, as for the person who does not believe in this, and just places reliance upon his own intellect and his own thinking, then this is clear misguidance. And punishment of the grave, adhab al-qabr, and bliss in the grave, the na'im in the qabr, are proven by the proofs from the book and the sunnah. Indeed, the scholars have said that the ahadith are mutawatir. They are reported by huge numbers of people at every level of transmission with regard to this. From Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And whoever denies an affair which is mutawatir, he will be an unbeliever. He will be a kafir. In other words, the affair of the punishment in the grave was something mentioned by the Prophet wasallam, reported from him by a large number of companions and from them by a large group of the tabi'een and so on all the way down the line of transmission. So it is something mutawatir and as Shaykh al-Fawzan said and someone who denies that which is mutawatir Someone who denies it, rejects it, he will be an unbeliever. Then he said, And the Mu'tazila do not believe in that which occurs in the grave. Because they are aqlaniyun, they are aqlaniyun, people of the aql, the rationalists, people who put the intellect first and foremost. They are aqlaniyun, they are rationalists. <coughs> and they are the ones who build affairs upon the basis of their aql, of their intellect. In other words, whatever they, in their intellect they think they can confirm with their intellect, they affirm it. Whatever their intellect doesn't confirm, they deny it. That's the aqlaniyun, the rationalists. He said, and they call the evidences of the legislation vanniya, speculative evidences. This is what the Mu'tazila and they're like. That's what they say about the evidences of the Book and the Sunnah. They say that they are vanniya, speculative. They may be right or there is some, there's some room for doubt. They say they are vanniya, 
speculative evidence is not conclusive. He said, But as for the evidences of the aql, of the intellect, then in their view, these are yaqiniya, these are affairs of certainty. That is what they say. So Sheikh al-Fawzan briefly outlines the position of the aqlaniyun, those who depend upon their own intellect. They say the evidences of the Book and the Sunnah are dhaniya, speculative, they need further investigation. And as for what is proven by their intellects, they say that is something certain, yaqeen. An intellectual evidence is a matter of certainty. Then he said, so they are the aqlaniyun, the rationalists. And they are the mu'tazila. And those who proceed upon their way. From the rationalists in these times. And of course, they exist in these times and they're quite common in these times, the like of these people. Those who are rationalists and those who have the same methodology. They take the evidences of the Book and the Sunnah and they say they are dhaniya, speculative evidences. And they take what they say to be an evidence from the intellect and they say that is something of yaqeen, something of certainty. Then Shaykh al-Fawazan said, And from the proofs for punishment in the grave is the saying of Allah the Mighty and Majestic with regard to the people of Fir'aun. النار يؤرضون عليها غدوا وعشيا ويوم تقوم الساعة أدخلوا آل فرعون أشد العذاب سورة غافر the fortieth سورة آية forty six with the explanation they فرعون and his people after their deaths they are being exposed to the heat of the fire morning and evening and on the day when the hour will be established it will be said enter the people of Fir'aun into the severest torment in other words the ayah mentions the torment of the people of Fir'aun before the hour that they're being tormented they're being, pun they're being punished before the hour is established after their deaths and before the hour is established. Shaykh Fawzan said, so he's saying, Annaru yu'aradun, yu'araduna alayha. The fire, they are being exposed to it. Huduan wa'ashiyan, morning and evening. This is in the grave. This is in the grave. So this ayah is a proof for punishment in the grave. Then he quotes a second ayah from the, book, from the Book of Allah, the Most High, for punishment of the grave. And he says, وَإِنَّ لِلَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا عَذَابًا دُونَ ذَلِكْ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Surah al -Tur, the 52nd surah, ayah 47. With the explanation, and as for the, unbelie as for the unbelieving wrongdoers, then there will be a punishment for them before the punishment of the hereafter. However, most of them do not know. Sheikh al-Fawzan said, so he's saying, عَذَابًا دُونَ ذلك. There will be a punishment before that. They will receive, the unbelievers will receive a punishment before the punishment of the Day of Resurrection. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, they said, mean people of knowledge from before, they said, it is the punishment of the grave. And then he mentions a second saying in explanation of this punishment mentioned in the ayah, he said, or it is also said, it means punishment in this world. With regard to their being killed, and being taken captive and having the jizya tax placed upon them and other than that 
and the ayah covers both meanings. I mean, Sheikh Fawzan has mentioned what some of the people of Tafsir of the past said. Some of them said it means that the unbelievers will be punished in, the, in their graves. Some of them said, in the, some of the Mufassirin of the past said, it means that the unbelievers will be punished before their deaths in this world. With, as he said, be, they're being killed, they're being taken, cap, taken captive, they're having the jizya tax placed upon them, and so on. So Sheikh, Sheikh of Awzan concludes, the ayah covers both meanings. It refers to the punishment of the grave, and it also refers to their punishment in this world. Then he said, he quotes the third ayah, and his saying, he the most high, Surah Sajda, the 32nd Surah, Ayah 21, with the explanation, and we will cause them to taste the lesser punishment before the major punishment so that they should turn back. Sheikh al Fawzan said, the lesser punishment is the punishment of the grave, and the greater punishment is the punishment on the day of resurrection. So here, Sheikh al Fawzan mentions one explanation of the ayah from the different explanations of the Salaf for this ayah. He mentions one, which is that this ayah again, it refers, the lesser punishment in the ayah means the punishment of the grave. And just as a side point, then Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, rahimahullah, in his famous tafsir, he preferred the view about this ayah that it refers to their punishment in this world with regard to trials and tribulations and so on that come upon the unbelievers. يرجعون, that they receive trials and tribulations and, and a lesser punishment in this world. يرجعون, that they may turn back and repent. Tabari said meaning so that they can turn back and repent. Wallahu a'lam. Then Shaykh al-Fawzan, Hafizullah, he continues, As for the sunnah, then the ahadith are mutawatir, are reported by huge numbers of people, in affirmation of the punishment of the grave. And from them is what occurs in the Sahih that he, alayhi salatu wasalam, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he passed by two graves and he said, Innahuma la yu'adhaban wa la yu'adhabani fi kabir ama annahu kabir aw bala innahu kabir innahu la kabir أَمَّا أَحَدُهُمَا فَكَانَ يَمْشِي بِالنَّمِيمَةِ وَأَمَّا الْآخَرُ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَسْتَبْرِئُ مِنْ بَوْلِهِ A hadith that, all, that the Prophet sallallahu passed by two graves and he said these two people are being punished and they are not being punished for something major. Rather, it is something major. Or, indeed, it is something that is major. As for one of them, he used to carry tales to cause mischief between people. And as for the other one, then he, he had not used to protect himself from his urine. In a footnote, they mention that this hadith is reported by al-Bukhari and Muslim. And you'll find it in Bukhari as hadith 218, and with this wording here, as hadith 6055. And it's from a hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhumah. And again, just as a side point for for benefit insha'Allah with regard to the saying that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa first said Ama kabir or first he said 
la yu'adhabani fi kabir. They are not being punished for something major. And then, ama annahu kabir. But it is something major. Or, bala innahu la kabir. Or, it is something major. So some of these scholars, amongst them, an nawawi rahimahullah, they explain why is it that at first it was said it's not something major, then it seems to be said it is something major. So an nawawi said, in his explanation of the hadith in Sahih Muslim, he said, the scholars have mentioned two explanations. One of them is that it is not something major in their claim. I mean, the two people in the graves who are being punished, in their claim it was not something major that they were doing. But in, in reality, it is something major. It is a major sin. They didn't think they were committing major, something major from the sins, but in reality it is something major. That's the first explanation of the people of knowledge. And he mentions the second explanation is that it means not something major in difficulty to, for them to, to have avoided. I mean, it, would, it would not have been greatly difficult for them to have avoided it if they had chosen to. Then he said, and Al-Qadi Iyad, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned a third explanation, which is meaning it is not the greatest of the major sins. It's a, it's a sin, a major, a major sin, something, a problem, but it's not the very greatest of the sins. So in other words, Anawi mentions three explanations of the scholars with regard to that phrase. Wallahu a'lam. Then Shaykh al-Fawzan, Hafizullah, he continued. And likewise, the authentic hadith, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded seeking refuge from four things. Where he said, أعوذ بالله من عذاب جهنم ومن عذاب القبر ومن فتنة المحيا والممات ومن فتنة المسيح الدجال that Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم commanded he said and he commanded I seek refuge with Allah from the punishment of the hellfire and from the punishment of the grave And from the trials of life and of death. And from the trials of Al-Masih al-Dajjal. The false Dajjal, the Dajjal. Then as for this hadith, then as they mentioned in a footnote, it's reported by Tirmidhi and the hadith where the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded seeking refuge from these four things. It's also reported by Muslim in his Sahih from a hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. The Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِذَا فَرَغَ أَحَدُكُمْ مِنَ التَّشَهُّدِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَتَعَوَّذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ أَرْبَئِنْ مِنْ عَذَابِ جَهَنَّمْ وَمِنْ عَذَابِ الْقَبَرِ وَمِنْ فِتْنَةِ الْمَحْيَا وَالْمَمَاتِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ وَمِنْ شَرِّ الْمَسِيحِ الدَّجَّالِ Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه said, Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said, When one of you finishes from the last tashahhud, then let him seek Allah's refuge from four things. From the punishment of the fire and from the punishment of the grave. And from the trials of life and death, and from the evil of Al Masih al Dajjal. Then Shaykh Al Fawzan said, and other evidences. I mean, this is just a couple of hadith, but there are many other hadith affirming the punishment of the grave. And he said, and it may occur that some people witness examples of the punishment of the grave as an admonition and a lesson. 
here, Sheikh Fawzan is just making an indication that even though the punishment of the grave is from the, those affairs of the ghaib, punishment of the grave is, is an affair of the ghaib, something of the hidden and the unseen, but however, on certain occasions, in certain to certain people, Allah may allow them to see or to experience people being punished in the grave as an admonition for them and as a lesson. Then he said, so Al-Hafidh ibn Rajab mentioned in his book, Ahwalu al-Qubur wa Ahwalu ahliha ila yawm nushur this book of Al-Hafidh ibn Rajab, the terrors of the graves and the conditions of their inhabitants until the day of arising. That in this book he mentioned amazing things. Meaning he mentioned a number of affairs where people actually heard or witnessed bodies which had been taken out of the grave and the like. After a while and, and signs of punishment of the grave were seen upon them. So he said he mentioned amazing affairs. And likewise Ibn al-Qayyim in his book Ar-Ruh mentioned some amazing affairs. Then Shaykh Fawzan finished by saying, referring to the previous point from last week, from point 171, he said, and his saying, عَلَى مَا جَاءَتْ بِهِ الْأَخْبَارُ عَنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ As occurs in the narrations from Allah's Messenger, صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ Sheikh al-Fawzan said, since whatever occurs in the grave with regard to bliss and punishment is from the affairs of the ghaib, is from the affairs of the hidden and the unseen. So we do not affirm except what occurs in a proof. And we do not deny except what occurs in in it, meaning we don't affirm anything about the hidden and unseen except that it's affirmed in an evidence of the book or the sunnah, and likewise we don't deny anything from the ghayb about the occurs in the ghayb except something denied as in the book or in the sunnah. He said, "This is the position of the ahlu sunnah wal jama'ah," and that's where Sheikh Al Fawzan ends discussion of this point. And then the next point is with regard to the resurrection. And we'll leave that because that is a long point. We'll leave that till next time, inshallah. But just as a point of benefit, inshallah, then it was mentioned to me that it might be, it might be beneficial if we read, having indicated the hadith, if we read the long hadith that mentions punishment in the grave, the hadith of Al-Bara ibn Azib. It's a long hadith. So we'll read the hadith, inshallah. And this hadith is reported by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, and by Abu Dawood in his Sunan, and by Al Hakim, and by others. And what Shaykh Al Albani, Rahimahullah, what he did, he gathered the different authentic narrations of the hadith, hadith of Al Bara, he gathered the hadith together and placed any additional wordings that are authentic, he placed them within the hadith and gathered the wordings of the hadith together and put the hadith together in his book Ahkamul Janaiz, the funeral regulations. So I'll read the hadith, as Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah put the hadith together in that book, beginning at page 198. So he mentioned And the point he mentioned the hadith at is where he said, and it is perm permissible to sit at the side, meaning sit by the grave at the burial, with the intention of reminding the people who are present of death and what comes after it. And then he gives this hadith as an evidence for that. He said, as is shown by the hadith of Al Bara ibn Azib, who said, we went out along with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on a funeral of a man from the Ansar. 
So we came to the grave, and the side niche had not yet been dug. So therefore, Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sat down, facing the qibla, and we sat around him. And it was as if there were birds upon our heads. The explainers mentioned, meaning they were very quiet, not looking to the right or to the left. So he said, it is as if there were birds upon our heads. And in his hand, he had a stick with which he was prodding the earth. And he began looking towards the sky and looking towards the earth and raising his gaze and lowering it three times. And then he said, Ista'idhu billahi min adhab al qabr. Seek Allah's refuge from the punishment of the grave twice or three times. And then he said, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhab al qabr. He himself said, O oh Allah, I seek your refuge from the punishment of the grave three times. And then he said, He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, The believing servant, the mu'min, the believing servant, when he is departing from this world and going on to the hereafter, then some angels from the heavens descend upon him with white faces as if their faces were the sun. With them there are shrouds from the shrouds of paradise and perfume for embalming from the perfume of paradise until they sit at a distance away from him which can be reached by the sight and then Malakul Mawt then the angel of death alayhi salam comes until he sits by his head and says ayyatuha nafsu tayyiba al mutma'inna ukhruji ila maghfiratin min Allah wa ridwan the angel of death says o pure soul and in one narration at rest O pure soul, at rest, come out to, the for, to forgiveness from Allah and his pleasure. He said, so it comes out. In the believing person's soul, it comes out, flowing, just as a drop of fluid flows out from a vessel. So he takes it. The angel of death takes it. And in one narration, when his soul comes out, then every angel between the heavens and the earth makes supplication for it. And every angel in the heaven. And the gates of the heaven, mean the lowest heaven, the gates of the heaven are opened for him. And there are no inhabitants, mean no angels, present at any gate except that they make supplication, dua to Allah, that his soul should be taken up from their direction. So when he takes it up, he does not, or the angel, the angel of death, when he takes it, he does not leave it in his hand. He doesn't leave the person's soul in his hand even for the blink of an eye until he takes it and places it in those or in that shroud until he places it in that shroud and in that perfume and that is his saying he the most high tawaffathu rusuluna wa hum la yufarritun 
the ayah with the explanation, Our messengers take his soul in death, and they do not fall short in their duty. Then he said, And a smell comes from him, like the purest musk found upon the face of the earth. He said, then they ascend with it, with, this, like, with that believing soul. They ascend with it, and they do not pass by anyone, meaning any group of angels, except that they say, what is this pure soul? So they say, it is so-and-so, the son of so-and-so, mentioning him by the finest names which he used to be called, in this world until they take him to the lowest heaven and they request that it be, be open for him so it is open for him and then the closest ones from every heaven accompany him to the next heaven until he reaches the seventh heaven and Allah, the mighty and majestic, says, Write down the record of my servant in Aliyin. I mean, in the highest heaven. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا إِلِّيُّونَ كِتَابٌ مَرْقُومٌ يَشْهَدُهُ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ The three ayahs with the explanation. And what will explain to you what Aliyun is? In it will be the written down record, witnessed by those drawn close. Then he said, so his record will be written down in Eliyin. Then he said, or rather he said, then it will be said, return him to the earth, for I have promised that I, I have promised that from it I created you and to it I shall return you and from it I shall take you out another time. He said, so he will be returned to the earth and his soul will be returned to his body. He said, and he will hear the striking of the feet of his companions when they depart from him going away I mean when, when he's just been buried you'll hear the, feet, the footsteps of his companions departing after the burial and then two severe angels will come to him two stern severe angels will come to him and they will be very abrupt with him and they will make him sit up. And they will say to him, Man Rabbuk, who is your Lord? So he will say, Rabbi Allah, my Lord is Allah. So they will say to him, Ma dinuk, what is your religion? So he will say, my religion is Islam. So they will say to him, what was this man who was sent amongst you? So he will say, he is, Allah's, he is Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they will say to him, What deeds did you do? So he will say, I read the book of Allah and I believed in it. And I affirmed it. So he will be abrupt with him and say, Who is your Lord? And what is your religion? And who is your prophet? And this will be the last trial which the believer will face. So that is about what Allah the Mighty and Majestic said, يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا The ayah with the explanation, Allah will make those who are believers firm, with the firm saying in the life of this world. And he said, 
So he will say, my Lord is Allah, my religion is Islam, and my Prophet is Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So then a caller will call from the heavens. My servant has spoken the truth. So give him a bed from paradise. And give him clothing from paradise. And open for him a door towards paradise. He said, so its gentle breeze and fragrance will come to him. And his grave will be expanded for him as far as the eye can see. He said, and then there will come to him. And in one narration it is said, there will be shown to him a man with a handsome face, with fine clothing, with a beautiful scent. So he will, and he will say, receive good news of that which is pleasing for for you. Receive good news of pleasure from Allah and of gardens containing everlasting delight. This is your day which you were promised. So he will reply to him and you may Allah give you good tidings. Who are you? For your face is the face of one who comes with good. So he will say, I am your righteous deeds. For by Allah I have not known you except being quick upon obedience to Allah, slow to disobey him. So may Allah reward you with good. And then a gate will be opened for him from paradise. And a gate of the fire and he will say, this would have been your place had you been disobedient to Allah. But Allah has exchanged this for you instead of it. And when he sees what is in paradise, he will say, O oh my Lord, hasten the establishment of the hour so that I can return to my family and what is for me. So it will be said to him, Uskun, be, be calm, or be settled. He said, and as for the unbelieving servant, as for the kafir, and in one narration, the fajir, the wicked one, then when he is departing from this world and going on to the hereafter. Then angels descend upon him from the heaven. Angels who are severe and stern with black faces having sackcloths from the fire. So they will sit at a distance from him that the, eye, that the sight can reach and then Malakul Maut then the angel of death will come until he sits by his head and he says Ayyatuhan nafsul khabitha ukhruji ila sakhatil ila sakhatim min Allahi wa ghadab the angel of death will say O foul soul O filthy soul come out to wrath from, from Allah and anger. He said, so his, it, his soul, will scatter throughout his body. So he will drag it out, just as a pronged fork with many prongs is pulled through wet wool. So the veins and tendons will be torn along with him, along with it, along with his soul being dragged out. And he will be cursed by every angel between the heaven and the earth, and by every angel in the heaven. And the gates of the heaven will be locked. 
there will not be any inhabitants of any gate except that they make supplication to Allah that his soul should not ascend from their direction. So he will take it. I mean, the angel of death will take his soul. And when he takes it, he will not leave it in his hand even for the blink of an eye until he places it in that sack cloth. Sacking that material to make sacks with, or the like of that. And there will come out from him a smell like the worst stench of the foulest corpse rotting upon the earth. So they will take it up, and they will not pass by any group of angels except that they say, What is this foul spirit? So they will say, it's so-and-so, the son of so-and-so, mentioning the worst names which he used to be called in this world, until they reach the lowest heaven. And request is made for him that it be opened, but it will not be opened for him. Then Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recited the ayah, لا تفتح لهم أبواب السماء ولا يدخلون الجنة حتى يلج الجمل في سم الخياط The ayah with the explanation The gates of the heaven will not be open for them will not be open for the unbelievers nor will they, nor will they enter paradise until a camel passes through the eye of a needle And he said So Allah the mighty and majestic will say Write the record Or he'll say, write his record in Sidjeen, in the lowest earth. Then it will be said, return my servant to the earth, because I have promised them that from it I created you. And to it I shall return you, and from it I will bring you out another time. So his spirit will be thrown down. From the heaven. Until it lands in his body. Then he recited, وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَكَأَنَّمَا خَرَّ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَتَخْتَفُهُ الطَّيْرُ أَوْ تَهْوِي بِهِ الْرِيحِ فِي مَكَانٍ صَحِيقٍ The ayah with the explanation, and whoever commits shirk along with Allah, then it is as if He had fallen down from the heaven and been snatched by birds or the wind had carried him and thrown him in a far off place. So his soul will be returned to his body. He said, and he will hear the footsteps of his companions when they are departing from him and the two angels He said, and two angels will come to him who are severe and they will be severe with him and they will make him sit up and they will say to him who is your Lord? So he will say, ha, ha, I don't know. So they will say to him, what is your religion? So he will say, ha, ha, I do not know. So they will say, so what do you say about this man? who was sent amongst you. So he will not be able to mention his name. So it is said, Muhammad. So he will say, Ha, ha, I do not know. I heard the people saying this. He said, so it will be, it will be said, or rather he, he will say, Rather, rather it, will, it will be said, you did not know, and you did not recite. So then a caller from the heavens will call, he has lied. So give him bedding from the fire, and open for him a door to the fire. So its heat and its scorching wind will come upon him, and his grave will be squashed upon him. until his ribs cross over. 
and then there will come to him or there will appear to him a man with an evil looking face with foul clothing smelling with an evil stench and he will say receive news which will upset you this is your day which you were promised so he will say and may Allah give you news of evil who are you for your face is the one who comes with evil so he will say I am your foul deeds I have not known you except being slow upon obedience to Allah quick to disobey Allah so may Allah reward you with evil and then there will be set loose upon him one mean an angel there will be set loose upon him one who will be blind dumb and deaf and he will have a heavy hammer in his hand if a mountain was struck with it it would become dust so he will strike him with it until he is smashed to dust and then Allah will return him how he was before and he will strike him with it again and he will scream with a scream which will be heard by everything except for mankind and jinn and then a gate will be open for him from the fire and bedding will be given for him from the fire so he will say oh my lord do not establish the hour Sheikh Albani said the hadith reported by Abu Dawood and Al-Hakim and Al-Tayalisi and Ahmad and this full, full wording is that of Ahmad and by Al-Ajurri in al sharia and others he mentions others and he said and Al-Hakim said the hadith is authentic to the standard of the two sheikhs and al Dhahabi agreed with that and it is just as they said I mean the hadith is authentic to the standard of Al-Bukhari and Muslim and it was declared Sahih authentic by Ibn Al-Qayyim in his book I'lam al muwaqqiin and in his book Tahdhib al-Sunan and then Shaykh Al-Albani in a footnote he mentions that in some places here he's mentioned additions in brackets he mentions each addition which book of hadith it is taken from walhamdulillah wa sallallahu ala muhammad so any quick points of clarification Subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik